CBW News. This is a special edition. The Good Stuff. Hello and welcome to our one hour special of The Good Stuff. I'm Galen Etlin. These past few months, we've been living through unprecedented times. The pandemic, followed by protests and calls for social change. Through it all, there have been positive moments, stories of people coming together in unexpected ways. And it's what we love to highlight here on The Good Stuff. And what better way to celebrate this 4th of July weekend than with two people brought together by the national anthem who even made national headlines. It's pretty silent on campus at Portland State, just like it has been here for about three months. I, I majored in jazz, so I'm a music major, and that was kind of my specialty. A disappointing finish is how you could describe Madison Hallberg's senior year at PSU, but she speaks about the good stuff. I loved my time at PSU. I think what made it amazing was all of the opportunities that I got um, through singing with the chamber choir. A gifted vocalist, Madison went back to campus in late May to perform a song for the class of 2020. I love all music. I have a really wide <laughs> appreciation and I, I want to always be aware of where the music that I like comes from. For this year's virtual commencement, the school asked her to record this video of her singing the national anthem. We're so gallantly streaming. Her voice echoing between the trees, making way for an unexpected moment. Just as an African-American well male walking the park blocks, I didn't see a white individual or a woman or th these things. I just saw what felt like music. Emmanuel Henri lives near the park blocks. He felt the need to go outside and get some air when it hit him. So as I was walking by, I kind of passed Madison as she was singing. I didn't know who she was at the time or what they were filming for. And the rocket's I passed and I was like, you know what? Let's just back up. Let's just do it. Just be brave. Just ask if she wants to sing together. Henri is a professional opera singer and has performed all over the world. He understands how versatile a voice can be. It heals and it something connects. Like as a white person, it felt so right singing it with you more than by myself. Two artists from different backgrounds joining voices. It is the same instrument with the same amount of love joy, healing, and peace that comes along with that. And the way that we use that gift is empowering and it washes over others. It changes their lives exponentially. That a flag was still there. It's a song with a message that sounds so different to so many, but these days, for these two, it's not about what you hear, it's how you listen. And listen to what they're doing with their voice and adapt to that and don't try to outsing the person next to you, but listen to them. And that applies to all of life. Uh, make sure you listen louder than you speak. Whether you've worked hard on your voice like Henri and Madison, or you're just discovering it, whatever you do, don't keep it silent. Uh, when we kind of let our voices pour out, there's just no stopping us. And the whole of the I get chills every time. They are so talented. No surprise, Madison studied voice at PSU. Henri is now raising money for a project called Living in the Light. It's a film about singing in Portland during the quarantine and protests. Now, after the school year abruptly ended, a choir teacher in the Evergreen School District had the idea to keep the music going. Our Devin Haskins shows us high school students having concerts on their porches. It's not the typical concert venue they would normally sing in. Hello, I'm Noah Lean. I'm a junior. They are performing on the porches of their homes and playing into the living rooms of ours. Hi, um, I'm Ellen Berto from Mountain View High School. Hi, I'm Sophie Hansen from Mountain View High School. Welcome to EPS Porch Concerts. Their songs are either handwritten or ones we know and love. I'm going to be performing the song yesterday. Some, by Beatles, even with a twist. But I changed up the lyrics a little bit. These are just a few of the members of the Mountain View High School Choir, past and present. You seem so down to earth. Their director, Jenny Bell, saw a similar idea nationally and saw this as a way to see her students again doing what they love. We've gone through quite a, a pattern of emotions, but when we first got the news, it was it hit us really hard in the music world because we are a family 
and we didn't know that we weren't going to say goodbye to each other. Oh, 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 the times in life when we mess up. There was a lot of things we missed about not getting that closure. Now I need somebody to heal, somebody to know. Each night at 5 p.m., the district posts a new song on social media. Senior Sophie Hansen chose Count On Me by Bruno Mars. You can count on me like one, two, three, and I'll be there. Kind of talking about like friendship and like counting on each other like during hard times. And I felt like that was just like perfect for a time right now. Her senior year upended by a virus depriving her and others of those once-in-a-lifetime senior experiences. We had made it to state for dance and choir, and I'm going to miss out on the final concert for choir, senior prom. Yesterday, senior Ellen Berto went a different route. COVID-19 seems so far away. Now it's taken my senior year away. I wish I could go back to yesterday, like when I didn't have to worry about all this like coronavirus um, and like canceling everything. Separated by a virus, they are helping to bring us all together from a distance through music. I can't help but just sing along. And I know that singing brings joy to me. It just brings everybody together. Like when you're listening to the same song that like you were in a different moment, you can kind of go back to that moment and all be there. Bringing us together by a language we all understand. Now at home I will stay. No matter where we are. I believe in quarantine. Devin Haskins, KGW News. Sticking with some more good music now, around the world, musicians have brought comfort and peace through virtual concerts. Local student Kira Wong goes to Catlin Gable School, and she was one of two dozen cellists who joined one of those virtual concerts. Each played a passage from The Swan. These times are very difficult right now, and it was a big goal to be able to um, serve as some comfort using the skills that we have as musicians. Last year, Kira was selected to play with the Portland Youth Philharmonic at Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall. And there's even more good music from some of Portland's most talented artists still connecting with fans during the pandemic. I just want to uh, use my audience, I have quite a good sized online audience, to, um, to help out the folks that just don't have uh, a safety net. Hello everyone, Tony Starlight coming to you from the all new Starlight Studios. Show me, show me, show me how you do that trick. The one that makes me scream, she said The one that makes me laugh, she said Threw her arms around my neck I'm your friend, and I love you all I love this community, and I'm just trying to do we so appreciate them sharing that with us. Still to come here on The Good Stuff, Portland Trailblazer CJ McCollum gets into the wine business. And welcome back to The Good Stuff. We want to tell you about the staff at some Oregon wineries. They're doing good for people who work in restaurants that were hit really hard by this pandemic. Arnina Melhoff shows us how they're making an impact. 
The sun still shines, the grapes still grow. Oregon wine country has quietly been working behind the scenes during this pandemic. Able to open in phase one almost a month ago now, it's been time enough for Brooks Winery in Amity to formulate a plan. We have reservations available online, and it's going to be all reservation only, which is new for us. We used to just be walk-in. As you can see, we've spaced the tables so that every party is six plus feet apart. All of our servers are going to be wearing masks. We have um, rigorous cleaning standards. I know that we've taken the time to make sure that we're going to keep those people safe too, so I, I'm going to be happy that we're going to have people back. I really enjoy, enjoy being around our customers. Restaurants more than any other industry in the nation have suffered the most significant sales and job losses since the coronavirus outbreak began. It has been heartbreaking for the 30 plus employees at Brooks to watch. Yes, they have had to change their bottling and winemaking practices to stay healthy, but have thankfully kept most all of their jobs throughout this. The restaurant industry is super important to us and we've made a lot of really great friends and to me it's been the hardest thing to see is, is what's happened to the hospitality industry. Brooks has joined several other wineries in helping their food family. They're on track to donate just shy of $30,000 to COVID-related charities that help hospitality workers. Part of that was a special red blend called Storyteller Pinot Noir. It's already sold out, sorry. But the money went to World Central Kitchen, paying restaurants to prepare meals for those who can't afford them. Dobbs Family Estate in Dundee is giving 10% of its $30 Syrah to the Portland nonprofit Family Meal that helps pay medical bills for food service and agricultural workers. And Suzer Wines in Dayton has created a special Pinot Noir that gives $10 from every $25 bottle also to Family Meal. Buy off their website and you even get 10% off. Our customer base stepping up and buying these wines and really knowing that they're doing it for a good effort, I think it's, it's an important thing. It, it keeps your community base involved in giving back to who they like to support. And if you'd like to learn more about the special wine blends you just saw, you can find links on KGW.com. And how about wine and sports? A Portland trailblazer is using his time in quarantine for a new business venture. And it's not the type you might think about. CJ McCollum there talks with our Cassidy Quinn about getting into the wine industry. I'm excited about the uh, McCollum Heritage 91 uh, in partnership with Adelsheim. It's been a long time coming. It's not like we just put this together uh, overnight. Uh, we've been working on this for over a year, so that's been the exciting part to see you know, the beginning process, the steps we had to take uh, from the tasting to meeting with the winemaker, Gina, to kind of going over my taste profile to the actual designing process of the name, who we're going to use as a designer, what colors. There's just so much that goes into it that you don't really truly appreciate until you see it and experience it. CJ is a self-proclaimed wine connoisseur. Uh, I give myself random test here or there. We do taste tests, blind taste tests at certain wineries. Sometimes uh, at least might pick something from the cellar and I'll try to guess what it is. Of course, when it comes to the McCollum Heritage 91, there's no guessing involved for the Trailblazer shooting guard. First and foremost, I would say that it tastes marvelous and this is no bias. That's what people have told me. It's smooth. It's got the, the berry taste, more specifically the cherry taste. There's a little bit of earthy tones to it, but I, I truly do enjoy it. I think it pairs well with a lot of things because it's so smooth. It's light on the body. And uh, historically, uh, after drinking the McCollum Harris 91, there's been no hangover, which is very, very vital and important during these quarantine days if you want to make it to your workout on time. Will you be bringing it to Disney World to share with all of your NBA. Everyone gets their own bottle, COVID, you know, but. <laughs> no, I won't be giving out 300 bottles, but I have a list of, of select people that I will share with that I will make sure they're gifted. Are you thinking it will fuel people's quarantines and help people feel better right now? Maybe a little bit? <laughs> it can't hurt, honestly. If you want to try the McCollum Heritage 91, which, by the way, is named after the street CJ grew up on and the year he was born, you have to wait until September. Uh, great things happen in September. <laughs> and with that being said, I hope everybody's quarantine is going as well as it can be. 
All right, now we take you to Northeast Portland, where a food cart owner is showing support for Black Lives Matter protesters through food. Devin Haskins spoke with the owner of Keys Loaded Kitchen. If you want a full meal, Keys Loaded Kitchen has got you covered. Yeah, we have chicken yet. The food cart serves large portions of comfort food. I wanted to get something that I couldn't go get, which is a big plate of food that includes dessert and a drink and fresh baked bread. Like, I want to have all that every time I eat. The pandemic hasn't slowed down business for her, and the protests have kept her even busier. Right now we're doing uh, Feeding uh, Black Portland. The end of May, Kiana Nelson received a donation from activist and former mayor candidate Teresa Rayford. The money donated helped cover a meal for 40 black protesters. A typical meal costs around $25 and can feed a family. Once we had that happen, then we had people from the community start to donate. Money started pouring in. Kiana was busier than ever making food. Feeding Black Portland began to include everyone. So I decided that it would be for all protesters, black, white, you know, any whatever, whatever religion or creed you are. Um, so it's for everyone. On Fridays and Saturdays starting at 1, lines now stretch around the block and beyond. Now the line is up to, honestly, it's four blocks long. But with the donations that we are receiving, the food is lasting much, much longer. Uh, it used to last about two or three hours. I'm in there right now, five, almost six hours. So we're producing a lot, lot more food. And it's it's pretty tough, but it, it's, 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 it's beautiful. It's worth it. Kiana says this is about giving food, giving love and comfort so the ones marching can keep going. And for another restaurant in Clackamas County, it's about free pizza for our kids and helping families who need a little help making ends meet. Steve Redland takes us there. You've seen how the coronavirus pandemic threat has touched, well, everything in our lives, especially what businesses are closed and which ones are open. I'm Steve Lights, and I've owned the Pizza Suites here for a year and a half. Steve closed his pizza store for a few days and then realized people still need to eat. First I panicked. And he needs uh, yeah, to earn yeah. some income. Within a week I realized that all you have to do is just make a few adjustments and things are gonna come around. He thought kids living around his store are a long ways away from the school lunches they normally get. And he thought that free pizza lunches for kids at his Pizza Smitza on Southeast 82nd near Johnson Creek Boulevard would help. We're up to about 1,400. I've had four at home. I have. I have three school-age children. So all these kids in this area have to go a long ways in order to get their lunch. And so it's that way, well, you know, it's about somebody's got to step up and somebody's got to take care of the, of the uh, problems. At first, his employees wondered if this is a good time for free anything. But seeing the benefits in those well-fed faces guys. makes all the difference. Definitely helps on the the food budget and you know sometimes we just get tired of eating what's at home so we can come out and grab something that's a little different. Other businesses and Pizza Schmitza Corporate are donating to make the free lunches for school-age kids. And we've let other families know as well and they've also taken advantage of it and been able to get some pizza for their kids. We want to make sure that, that, that the kids in the neighborhood are taken care of. And we do first responders. Um, first responders get two slices and a, uh, and a drink. Yeah, over 100. Schools are in the summer break now, but Steve is extending the free lunch program through the summer. Hi guys. Thank you guys. Yeah. I was so surprised that we were able to come in and eat. That was very nice. Come out to our little pizza party and uh, come on, get a slice of pizza. And GoFundMe and Facebook fundraising events are helping to fund the lunches. <laughs> Part of my business model through everything has been to elevate my community. Steve hopes that kids catch on to the good feelings a good lunch can make. Community strong. An Oregon company is out with a new chip and to celebrate they're donating potatoes to feed families. Spud Love Snacks comes from Three Mile Canyon Farms in Boardman. Each week the company plans to donate potatoes to the nonprofit Farmers Ending Hunger. The Oregon Food Bank will then give them out. We appreciate Lisa Hill for letting us know about that story.
And here's a show of gratitude for people on the front lines. Hospital staff around Oregon got a sweet treat. Ice cream company Rethink donated more than 100,000 ice cream cups to health care workers in Portland, Springfield, and Eugene. Let us know about the good businesses, good people, and good deeds happening in your neighborhood. You can text photos and stories to 503-226-5088 or send an email to thegoodstuff at kgw.com. We'll be right back with more after this. Hi, I'm Galen Etlin. Welcome back to our one hour special of The Good Stuff. Tonight we're highlighting the good deeds and good people in our communities. And that includes this Beaverton girl. She's not even in high school yet, but she's quite the entrepreneur. How she went from scrunchies to face masks. And later we'll share good moments from graduation season. An alumni group at St. Mary's Academy found a personalized way to honor the class of 2020. But first, check out this unexpected reunion at a Portland protest. A demonstrator recognized a police officer, a mentor he hadn't seen in 13 years. John Goodwin meets the young man changed by that experience. A soft afternoon drizzle replaced the nightly tensions at the Justice Center on Friday. I started coming out here, and from the very first night I was out here, like seeing so many different people hurting, uh, expressing themselves through their voices, through their signs. Tiki Taru McCollum Jr. is a local DJ. Thanks for bringing me up. He's come down here 11 straight nights to have his voice heard in Portland's marches and nonviolent protests. Ever since I've been out here, it's been really hard to not be out here. Tiki is barely 22, but because of his summer spent at Camp Eagle Fern in Estacada, he speaks for the next generation. That's why I'm out here, for those kids, so that they can have a better, brighter future. And it's also what made last Tuesday so special for him. I could give a lot of the credit to Trevor Tyler for me being the man that I am today. On the fence line at Southwest 3rd in Maine, Tiki was watching the front of the crowd and encouraging calm. Because a lot of people were like tampering with the fence, trying to shake it, knock it over. That's when he saw someone he hadn't seen since his camp days 13 years ago, his mentor, Trevor. So I walk up, I'm like, yo, Double T, and he like, like kind of was like, who are you? I'm like, come here, like, come talk to me. And like, he saw me and like his face just lit up. And he's like, Tiki, like, dude, how are you? Tiki says he got some heat from the crowd for speaking to Trevor because behind a fence, behind a badge, was Sergeant Trevor Tyler. I know him as a man outside of this uniform, so I don't want any disrespect towards him or towards me because us connecting right now is man to man. Tiki's my dude. This video, captured by his friend Solomon, shows the two linking hands connecting through the very fence put up to separate. The moment was posted on Facebook and has been getting a lot of attention, highlighting hope and unity. We were barely able to get our hands through the fence, but we still made it work. And then we, I could feel he was squeezing my hand hard, and I was squeezing his hand hard because we love each other. Sergeant Tyler went on to answer some questions, but more importantly, he listened. It hit me in the heart so deep, not only reconnecting with him, but having him answer lots of questions and listen, like genuinely listen to all of us, and then letting me pray for him, and then having that real, like I could actually feel that he meant it when he said he loves me. And then I'm sorry that, that, I'm sorry that, that happened. And he was like, our goal right now is to get trust from the people. I want cops too to be able to walk around and not be scared. Tiki's plea to others is to be educated and open-minded, and to see each other as neighbors and friends. That, to me, is what I would love for our world in the future to look like. Minus that fence. Take that fence out, if we could just be there, holding hands, even even hugging. That's what I want our world to look like. All right, guys, hey, have a good night. I got to check on my line, okay? Thanks for talking. And this next story illustrates the power of love between a long married couple. When a Vancouver woman couldn't see her husband in person, she stood outside his window and sang. Devin Haskins brings us their strong bond of 60 years. When did you first know that you loved that special someone? Was it their smile, their personality, or maybe it was the look in their eyes? His twinkling blue eyes, and he walked through my work site one night, and he smiled, and 61 years later, here I am. <laughs> Carol fell head over heels in love with Hal Bailey when they first met in the Air Force back in the 1950s. For 60 years, the only thing that separated them was when Hal served in the Vietnam and Korean Wars. I don't know 
what the difference is, but it's knowing that I can't see him is what really bothers me, and knowing that he doesn't understand that, where when we were younger and had them, it was fine. In 2008, a Parkinson's disease and then a dementia diagnosis would try to get between the two, but Carol would stand by his side every step of the way. I took care of him for 12 years, but he liked to fall. <laughs> I uh, had a hard time at times picking him up. My health is not the best, and so I talked with the kids, and we all decided that Dad would be better in a home. A few months ago, Hal was moved into the Iris Adult Care Home in Vancouver. She would visit or call him daily until three weeks ago, when she was told she couldn't even be with him during the quarantine. It is hard. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 60 years of love, and the only thing unfairly keeping them apart is a virus that won't go away. So that's when I saw my sign sitting on the floor here, and I decided to go over and serenade him. I love you, a bushel and a peck, a bushel and a peck, and a hug around the neck. Carol says he doesn't understand why the two can't be together, and she can't wait till these doors are open once again. I get a laugh out of him and his eyes twinkle again. That's what I want to see. I want to see his twinkling blue eyes. Because I love you, a bushel and a peck. You bet your pretty neck I do. I do, 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 do. We want to thank Devin Haskins for bringing us that story. Well, a perspective of passion and hope is captured by a photographer night after night at protests in Portland. Our Catherine Cook shares the story behind some of these emotional images. Can I get a picture of your sign? They say a picture is worth a thousand words. Thank you. Yeah. Honestly, right now, pictures are worth a million words. Just look through Mariah Harris's lens. Make sure I capture the, the strength and the pain and the, and the love and everything that they're feeling. They are the people who, for days, have gathered in Portland's parks, streets, and on bridges to say Black Lives Matter and demand social justice. People who have gotten out of their wheelchairs to lay on the ground, like there's certain things that people are doing and it's just like, wow, I cannot believe you're doing that for the cause. And I just want to be able to capture that. For Mariah, photography has long been an artistic outlet that blossomed into a side job. She started Moments by Mariah and captures a lot of family life milestones. She never imagined capturing a historical one. A lot of history has not ever been told through our eye or our lens. And to be able to capture that as a black woman and show it my people, it, I feel honored to do so. Mariah posts her photos on Instagram and loves when people find meaning in them. In this picture, the crowd is singing happy birthday to Breonna Taylor, a black woman killed by Louisville police officers. Mariah spoke with the woman in the center of the photo. She said she's never felt so much pain and love in the same moment. And the tears in her eyes just spoke to me. Even though I couldn't see her whole face, you can just read it as she's holding her phone. And I cry every single time I see the image. Like, it, it, is, it got to my heart. The kind of images she hopes will transport people back to this place, both now... This movement, it's powerful. ...and in years to come. Now, with many businesses still boarded up because of the protests, new artwork continues to show up in downtown Portland. Photojournalist Chad DeHart has the story behind one of the newest murals. My name is Nathan Jackson. I've been an artist since I was four years old. Got 36 different colors. Beautiful colors. Cool fact that uh, this is actually going to be my first time spray painting. I thought about the kids. I thought about the kids in our future. Because this right now is all for the future. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah. Another one. I did the kid. Saw that he was beat down. Just show some emotion and added a glove on there, a boxing glove, to uh, to express just to keep fighting. 
purple. They're doing pretty good for first time spray painting. Jordans. Jordans. Jordan ones, just like these. <laughs> I didn't practice anything at all, just I kinda like to learn on the spot. And this is just a way for me to express myself, you know, my form. Lots of color. Let's continue our look at good artwork with an 11-year-old in Lake Oswego. This is a painting inspired by his backyard. Matias Jaramillo uh, excuse me, is the artist. He included two scenes, one where a rock drops into a lake and spreads ripples. The other side of the lake is still calm. It shows how social distancing can help slow the spread of coronavirus. In our backyard, we have a tiny little pond and we have these like two, um, like every day, these like two ducks come to our pond like twice a day or something. I thought of like the ripple effect of like how it's spreading because the coronavirus is so easy to spread. He's on it. Now the painting was one of the winners in a contest organized by Dr. Christopher Serino at Adventist Health. A local woman is creating some good art for strangers by using rocks as her canvas. Colleen Rulin painted the colorful designs on these rocks. She hides them on nature trails, park benches, and outside of shops across Happy Valley. Last week, she dropped off over 150 rocks at the Happy Valley Farmer's Market. Colleen tells us she hopes the rocks bring a little bit of hope and joy to people and that they inspire them to paint and hide their own rocks too. Still to come, a seven-year-old saves up his allowance, all $1,000 of it, and donates the cash to a good cause. Yes, we're open. Yes, we're open. At Brainless Tees, we'll hook you up with masks and we can customize them too. Never apologize for being awesome! Hi, I'm Susan from the Fossil Cartel and we are open. Hi folks, this is Jesse from the Viewpoint on Springwater and yes, we're open for takeout. Aloha, we are Bamboo Grove Hawaiian Grill and yes, we are open. Yes, we're open. For the full list, visit kgw.com slash open. Let's recognize the good work of a young girl in Beaverton. She already had her own business, then figured out a way to use it to help others during the pandemic. Ashley Korsland got to meet her. You probably wonder what all these fabrics are on the um, table for. At just 10 years old, Gianna Harris is leaving her mark on the world. Hi, Gucci Budgies! The fourth grade entrepreneur started her own business last year, Gigi's Scrunchies. Mom Anna taught her how to sew. But I wanted to teach her so that in the event that she wanted to do something, she knew she was able to hand make it herself, or at least attempt to, right, and be creative. So one day we went to Joanne's and bought some fabric, and um, my first ever one, I hand sewed it, so I didn't have a machine or anything like that. Um, it was very fun for me. Gianna started small, selling scrunchies to friends at school. Then she graduated to a business license, a website, and even hosted a pop-up shop. Bye. She sold out over 300 scrunchies in like two hours. So it was pretty successful. She really enjoyed it. Then the pandemic hit and Gianna jumped to action. She's like, hey, you know, um, I was watching the news and what do you think about making masks? And the first thing in my mind, I'm like, I don't know how to make a mask, <laughs> right? And so um, Anna and Gianna, you know, they got together and figured out how to make them. Learning as they went, the family started sewing, eventually selling a thousand masks online. It takes a lot of work um, for each mask. Then Gianna's mom saw a social media post from Metropolitan Family Service asking for mask donations for its frontline workers. The family knew they could help, and for good reason. MFS serves thousands of local families in need with things like food and after-school activities. We serve over 36,000 uh, people in the Portland area. One of those families is Gianna's. Gianna is part of the MFS after school program where they offer um, a variety of activities. They provide the service for free, so 
um, when we definitely had the opportunity to help out MFS, it definitely made us feel like we were able to pay it forward for the services that they offer. I feel very proud of myself for doing this, and I love helping people, so it makes me even more proud. Go Gianna, that's so awesome. Thanks to Ashley Corslin for sharing that story. Now, do you remember saving up your money as a kid to get that game or toy you really wanted? Star Wars Legos. Seven-year-old Wesley has spent the past several years saving up for something special, and photojournalist John Goodwin shows us the thoughtful way he used the money from his helping jar. You know, he, uh, he cares about people, he cares about um, the things that we're doing, the things that, how we can help people. It's pretty easy to see why PJ Malokas is proud of his son, Wesley. Wesley's a great kid. Like he's, uh, he does the right things. He, uh, you yeah. know, he's calm, he's helpful. He's, uh, except for I whacked him in the butt. Yes, yes he whacked him in the butt. <laughs> and it's also easy to see that Wesley is proud of his Legos. R2D2. But his building experience doesn't stop at the arch nemesis of bare feet. He's teamed up with some experts that want to make sure there's a roof over every head. We need to continue to help folks get into a stable home so they can, they can get through a, a storm like this. Steve Messinetti is the president and CEO of Portland's local Habitat for Humanity affiliate. He says they simply can't do their work without donations of money and time. These are homes for families that don't have a good place to shelter right now, as we all shelter in place. And many of them are, are frontline workers in healthcare and um, grocery stores and nursing homes. Housing is um, something that is critical for everybody. And in, in this moment, we thought it was really, really important. And we wanted to take the time and sort of help instill a sense of community and service with Wesley. And, um, you know, hopefully we can inspire some others to do the same thing. Wesley may not be building houses, but with the help of his parents, what he saved will help make a big impact for others. Hi, I'm Wesley. I'm seven years old. I want everyone to be able to have a safe house. That is why I gave my helping term money to Habitat for Humanity. Now, this wasn't just a few pennies from his penny jar. Um, this was $500 that he saved up over over many years. $500 that his parents matched, then that was matched by local businesses. And we just think it's a really, really important mission all the time and even more so right now. Really gives us hope that we will get through this crisis together and maybe even come out stronger. All thanks to a small helping jar that will help pour a strong foundation for those who need it most. Now to a high school student in Beaverton who did some good for younger kids. Hannah Hunt handed out a hundred bags filled with games and activity books. She worked to raise enough money to buy the Brainy Bags from Piccolo Mondo Toys. Thanks to Sarah Fisher Beachy with the Beaverton Education Foundation for sending these photos. An Oregon chef is trying to make sure people in need don't go hungry during the pandemic. Mark Guzman and a group of volunteers delivered free meals to people at the Do Good Multnomah Veterans Shelter in northwest Portland. Guzman has been cooking and handing out food for weeks now through his nonprofit Meals on Us PDX. We appreciate Linda Hildreth for letting us know about this good deed. And from one good deed to another, a local couple gives back with beer. Jeff and Alicia Gillies, a firefighter and a nurse, teamed up with Yahats Brewing to craft a special batch. The session IPA is called First Responder, and all the money made will go to first responders affected by the pandemic. We want to thank Ron Morgan for letting us know about this one. Well, how about a little bit of silliness now? Coming up, sights and sounds from a unique parade put on for a retirement community in Beaverton. In the spirit of 4th of July weekend, we just had to share that adorable video with you. A big thank you to Tara Albinger for sending it in. Now, before the start of the summer, schools had to find creative ways to honor graduating seniors. So we want to share a few unique celebrations, starting with St. Mary's Academy in Portland. Here's photojournalist Ken McCormick. Well, this is our 50th year of graduating from St. Mary's, so we kind of feel a little connection to this year's class. Thought back to our last couple months of our graduating year and how special it was. That's when all the fun activities take place. And these poor seniors didn't get that opportunity. They knew their caps and gowns were coming, 
but the signs were a surprise. On behalf of the 1970 graduating class of St. Mary's, we present you this Thank you. Congratulations Yard Sign. I'm Terry Mariani, a proud graduate of St. Mary's Academy from the class of 1970. And we also have delivered your diploma and your cap and gown. Thank you so much. I was sitting in my dining room looking out at a political sign and thinking, let's do something like that. And that's kind of how the project got started. I'm Flora Satina, and I'm a graduate of St. Mary's Academy from the class of 2020. So it was just kind of like a nice package, like even though we're all separated, they're still like making an effort to try and connect with us and show us like, you know, we still want to give you things and show that, you know, even though everything is really crazy right now, we're like recognizing you as a graduate and everything that you've done. Our class wanted to deliver, personally deliver, each of the signs to this year's graduating class. 142 graduating seniors that we delivered signs to. We had plenty of drivers and it was, it was just a great experience and a fun experience for us to see how excited they were. We were able to put a label on the back of the signs, letting them know it was from the class of 1970. Most of them came out in their pajamas, but they came out with big smiles on their faces and really were excited to see the signs and know that they were remembered from a class 50 years ago. I don't know, I think I'll just leave it up for however long I feel just kind of like, yeah, I want to still celebrate this and uh, keep it up a little longer than the normal. Yeah. And without further ado, uh, let us begin. Let us graduate the Wilson class of 2020. Having a drive through graduation ceremony. Graduation is finally here. Getting their diplomas at Wilson High School is the final act for these students. I'm nervous, actually. Graduating from high school is important in anyone's life, full of friendships, accomplishments, and challenges. But this year, it's different. It was fun. I've been to every other graduation except for my own. It's a difficult time to be graduating. The graduates went on a drive through ceremony, all right. But there's a surprise on this drive. Stop get out and walk across a stage. It adds even more to the memories of this very unique year. Feels crazy, I can't believe that happened. I just am gonna say thank you so much for letting us at least go across the stage. I thought it was really cool. They're really good this year with it, planning everything. Ceremony makes it real for people, regardless of what the ceremony is, so something. It's been an interesting end to the year and we want to come out here, show our support to the seniors for their hard work and to show that we see them and, and we care. For the 391 graduating students at Wilson High School in Southwest Portland, the last months of their schooling has been totally different than any of them could ever imagine. Their senior year is over remotely. It just kind of was assumed that graduation wouldn't truly happen. So originally we were maybe going to have a commencement in August, but it's nice to just have it over now and get closure. Plus, at a nationwide protest. I'm actually going to a protest later in the day today. I'm hopefully going to wear this outfit to, um, to show that I'm a graduate um, and I'm for the movement. I honestly was just focused on not falling. And there is no way that this year can be forgotten. And it's unique. No one will ever have this experience, right? This exact. Yeah. Woo! Congratulations! 58 seniors this year. One thing that the 2020 graduating seniors end their year with Wilson, is that they've got more memories and greater hopes for the future. Very proud. He's almost all A. It feels awesome. I'm really happy about today. Congratulations to our class of 2020. Now, sometimes good moments come out of a little bit of silliness, right? Photojournalist Kurt Austin takes us to a special show meant to bring some smiles to residents of a Beaverton assisted living facility. I love you and don't you forget it. I love you and don't you forget it. I love we you just miss our residents and we want to let them know we love them. They are not forgotten. You won't regret it. Love me too and you won't regret it. My name is Brenna Hurwitz and I teach yoga and therapeutic dance at facilities as well as yoga for PD. We've been locked down for a long time. Even though they've been on lockdown, it's been really trying for them and for us too. 
just keeping my social distancing. My name is Barbara Lumen, and I live here. It just makes me so sad to think of so many of them unable to come out, unable to see family, unable to be hugged. And I'm just hoping to bring a smile to their faces and let them know they are not forgotten. Don't forget it, I love you, and don't you forget it, baby. I'm in for this. <laughs> and the exciting part is we're going to do a parade. A loud, noisy parade around a whole building so everyone can see us. I've got the wave. <laughs> Just tea for two and two for two. So I've been a performer and dancer all my life, and this is who I want to work with now. I really love, love working with this appreciative population. I think it's wonderful. It brightens our day. It's given us something to be happy about. Well, all these signs are for you, right? That's so sweet. The second part is like a happening where simultaneously we're at different spots around the building. Now let's put some entertainment on the outside and let people view it from a distance. We have Jeffrey the dog. This is Jeffrey. And I'm Tim. Okay, Jeffrey, come on. <laughs> we have a fabulous cast. LaRue and Sue and Laura Lou who went to clown college. <laughs> that's the payment right there. That's that's what I do it for is to see that transformation from stuck in your own world to open and full of wonder. Oh hello! Thank you for putting up the thank you signs. <laughs> I'm happy, really happy to make them happy. Come on. Good boy. Jeffrey likes it. He loves coming here because my wife's parents stay here. The world is an amazing place, even when things are crappy. Brightens our day. Can't you see I love you. Happy? Can't you see how happy we I'll see you soon. We I definitely love you. We definitely hope you can see them soon. Now we could all use a little laughter right now, and a Portland family's Instagram does just the trick. Devin Haskins takes us to Portland's Ministry of Silly Walks. It's remarkable how this little sign on a quiet street can bring out the funny in people. It's fun when you see one person by themselves in it, but uh, yeah, we get quite a few. Welcome to the Ministry of Silly Walks in the Hillsdale area of Portland. Like everyone, I've had a little little extra time on my hands. It's it's been a fun thing to do with my my kid. I have a seven year old. Chris Campbell and his family put up the sign in late April and started posting the videos from their security camera to an Instagram account. Families, you know, always do it. Um, yeah, but I would say probably half the people that are walking by are doing it. It's a play on the comedy sketch by Monty Python. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen uh, you know a lot of the Monty Python stuff, but you know certainly remember the Ministry of Silly Walks. The neighborhood silly walks idea spread around the world after a Michigan family created their own version. The only rules? When you pass this sign, you are entering the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Silly Walks. You are compelled to do one. What that is, is up to you. I think my favorite was, you know, there was this cute family that was uh, playing tag back and forth. The mom kind of slipped. On, on some mud and fell down and, and it was just a fun family moment to watch that. Campbell says he gets a handful of walkers a day and the weekends are usually busier. And since starting the account, it's brought joy to his followers, family and neighbors walking by. There's a lot of people, you know, saying thank you. Thank you for putting a smile on my face. And it's just, it's been fun um, kind of pe getting people to maybe think about something else and have a good time and get their mind off of what's going on around us right now. And thanks to Devin Haskins for sharing that story as well. That's going to do it for us tonight. We want to thank you so much for watching and for joining us. We'll be back Monday night at 7 to share more of your positive stories, so keep them coming. And one more thing before we go. A lot of people are spending the holiday weekend at their favorite camping spots. So we'll close with some of your good camping photos. Have a great night.